it's Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. Okay, so I've had an awakening. After a night that I thought I was going back into old patterns and going back into a depression because I thought oh, I'm just not moving forward. That's how I felt that night. I went to bed thinking, I keep having the same recurring thoughts. I keep getting into these worry patterns, you know, of how I'm going to pay the bills, of how I'm going to do this, of how I'm going to do that. And, you know, you spend some nights just sitting there and these thoughts just keep repeating themselves over and over. And then you'll spend nights, a few nights in a row with these thoughts repeating themselves, you know. And I just, that night, I got to a point where I thought, I have had enough. I've had enough of the chatter that goes on in my head. I've had enough of listening to it. I've had enough. I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to. I don't want to suffer anymore because that's all it makes me do. All that worry, all that stress, all those thoughts, all they do is put me in a place where I feel bad. I feel helpless. So, you know, I can't help but observe my daughter. She's six. And every day I watch her, no matter what happens. No matter what happens. No matter how sick she gets. No matter what goes on in her day. This is what I've been observing. She always looks to that next, to that moment. The moment that she's experiencing. And it doesn't matter how she's feeling. I've seen her with fevers and vomiting and she looks awful, but she still wants to play. She still wants to have fun. She doesn't want to miss that moment because of how she feels physically. And it reminded me, it took me back to when I was a kid and I would wake up in the mornings and I was excited about the day. I couldn't wait to see what I was going to learn that day. Couldn't wait to get to school. Couldn't wait to see the teacher. Couldn't wait to start the class. You know, that what we were going to learn that day. And sports day, what were we going to do for sports? Every day was exciting. You know, you'd, every moment, because every moment was different. But that was the difference that I've noticed since this awakening that I've had, that I lived moment by moment by moment. I was fully in that moment, trying to get the most out of that moment. At no time when I was a child and when I'm observing my daughter, at no time is she thinking, what am I gonna be doing in the next hour? What am I gonna be doing tomorrow? What am I gonna be doing next week? at six, she's six years old. And the other thing I find, she'll come home from school and she's all excited to see me and we're together. What did you do today? I don't remember. In her mind, I'm here with you now. I'm in this moment. I don't know what I did an hour ago, two hours ago, three hours ago. I did it then, it's done. I'm here with you now. That's all she knows. And then throughout the night, there'll be moments where she'll, oh yeah, we did this. Like she'll reenact, you know, what they've done at school and show me this is what they did or this other thing. Or, you know, if she's had library day, this is the books that she's brought home. But that's the reason she can't remember what she's done throughout the, you know, throughout her day, because she's excited to see me at that moment. And we're going home at that moment. And she's with me, fully present, not thinking about, what we're going to be doing for the next hour, not thinking about what we're doing for dinner tonight, not thinking about what are we going to do after bed or tomorrow morning. She's there in that moment. And that's what we've forgotten to do. We've lost that. Or we haven't been taught to do that. As children, we do it naturally. We do. We don't know another way. It's just a natural state to be in that moment. As adults, 
you know, and especially when you've been observing the adults around you, all they ever do is worry about the future, what they're going to do next week, next month, next year, what happened a year ago, what happened two years ago, talking about the past, how bad it was, all the bad things that happened in the past. You see, these videos are not for us to be reliving the bad things that happened in the past or to be labeling them as bad. It's to be it's so that you can understand what you've been through and be able to let go of it. It's not about going back and feeling bad about what you've been through. There's no point in doing that. There's no point. You might as well bury the past and ignore it and never look at it again. It'll sit in your subconscious and it'll keep your patterns going. But there's no point going back if that's what you're going back for. To look at your past. The reason we even bother to go back and look at anything is to understand something that we're going through today that we haven't let go of. A decision that we made us, you know, about ourselves in our childhood. We made a decision that maybe we weren't wanted. Maybe we were invisible. I'm just using the ones that I came up with as a child. Okay, and then we take that into our adult life. We take that baggage with us. We've decided that that's who we are. We're not worthy of love. We're not good enough to be loved. All of these labels that we take with us as adults. And so the point of looking at the past is to try and understand why we are reacting a certain way today. Why do we get upset if someone says something? Why do we get offended and never want to talk to them again? Why do we become so afraid that we don't even want to go there? All right, my darlings, that's the only reason you would bother looking at the past, not to relive the hurt, but to understand it, understand what you decided from that experience about yourself. It's made who you are today. All right, my darlings, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video because I have so much to share with you today. So much has happened in just two weeks.